Hi guys, welcome back to A for Analysis. I am back after a long time, but here's a good news. I have a really good data set and today we'll do exploratory data analysis. Now my work is already done. I have uh, done the coding part. I have done the visualization. I have also written a blog, but in case you have seen none of it, I will explain each and every single step of what I have done and I will also walk through the code that I have written. So first let us understand what is the case study here is this is a case study to understand the bank loan defaulters. We are wanting to do a exploratory data analysis and that is the only purpose we have in this case study. We'll be using very simple tools, we'll not use anything fancy but with the use of very basic tools we'll try to get as much information as possible. So what is the problem statement here? So there is a bank who wants to give loan to uh, the applicants. Now whenever some person is app, uh, uh, giving an application the bank needs to understand whether at all the person will be able to give back that loan like whether the person will be able to repay the loan or not or is there a chance that this person will going to have some payment difficulty or going to be a defaulter so this bank has a bunch of data available with it regarding the applic applicant regarding the current application and regarding the previous application status as well so whenever some person is coming to the bank and applying for a loan the bank can take the data and it can also go back and check whether or not this person has applied for a loan before whether or not he or she had any payment difficulty whether or not he or she was able to pay the loan in time or how how long did it take uh, for that person to repay the loan all these things we can see in the data set so that is the main goal here uh, our goal is just to uh, take the data understand it and give as much information as possible from the data set so we will be working with uh, two data set here one is application data dot csv and the other one is previous application dot csv the application data is the uh, data about the current applicant and what is the current status of that applicant and previous application is the data about the ap applicant who has been applying uh, has been applying before this will definitely not be present for applicants who, who are applying for the first time but bank takes this opportunity to check whether this customer is a new customer or an old customer who always has a payment difficulty or who is a loyal customer and is able to pay the loan in time. So there is also uh, the application status which uh, you can see from the previous application uh, C, uh, CSV. This is the approved, cancelled, refund or unused or offer. So what does this mean? This only means the status of the previous application so when this person when a certain person had applied for a loan before whether it was approved by the company cancelled whether it was refused for some reason or whether it was in unused offer unused might be because of many reasons so we will not go into that so there is one more csv which is just to clarify on the meaning of the data and different features we have now i'll not go into details of that so first i started with the previous application data i guess yeah i have opened the correct one so my goal was first simple basic things just importing the libraries here since we have two data sets here I just had a quick look of the two data sets, first five rows, just the head, just to get an idea like whether all the features are same or uh, do we have anything different. 
So from the quick look, we can see that this has 122 columns and this has 37 columns. So from this, you can say that, yeah, definitely for the current applicant, we have so many other features, just not these one. And we will also see whether these all features are present in the current application or not. So this was our first impression of the two data sets. Then I have also uh, just printed the info, which means it will give the list of the features. And we could just have a look SKID brief card. These are the unique identifiers to like identify the applicant. And there is name, contract type, amount, annuity, credit, application, whatnot. Then there is weekday. Uh, this is something I think when the application was given in flag, there are some rates and there are so many columns. And this was the first time I was doing very basic stuff and I had never done such a big data set before. So when I saw this data set for the first time, I was a little bit intimidated to be honest. But once I take a clo close look at the data set, I slowly started understanding that there is nothing uh, out of the world in this. Everything has some meaning and we can um, like sort of tell a story from it. So next thing that I did, I checked the, as we all know that we have 122 columns in the app, uh, application, current application and there are 37 columns in the previous application and also you can see that there are so many rows in this previous application there are so many entries in the previous application and the number of entries are comparatively less in current application We also identified that there are actually eight features which are common in current and previous application data frame. And since there are two tables or two data frames we have in our hand, definitely there is a chance that we might need to merge these two or we need to uh, take one feature from this uh, table and try to relate to another feature from another table. So because of that, I uh, found out which is the common column and which I can use to merge these two data frames if at all required. So SKID car, this, this is an unique identifier which I can be uh, using to merge these two data frames. The next thing I moved on with is the data cleaning part. So data cleaning is a huge part of the exploratory data analysis, of course, because um, here, as you can see, once I just uh, calculated the missing data percentage for all the categories, it is just giving me uh, the categories that are, that are having at least some amount of missing data. It is not printing the features that uh, do not have any missing data. So here, as you can see, it is giving the percentage. Uh, suppose here, the first one has 99% uh, data missing. So we cannot do anything about this columns, of course, because it almost all the data is missing in this feature. So we will do, we'll straightforward, we can just drop this rows, uh, drop these columns, drop these features. Here I have uh, written, that 99% data is missing. So these features will just drop. We will not even think about it. And for the features for which the uh, amount of missing data is very low, suppose 2% or approximately 2%, for those features, we are going to drop the rows having missing value. So by doing that, we will not lose a lot of data. But if we are going to uh, like drop the rows where these, this particular feature is having missing value, in that case, we'll just lose the 99% of the uh, actual data set. So we cannot do that stuff. 
that's what I did here I just dropped the rows and dropped the features wherever it was required next thing I did is extracting the numeric features we can do this in another way I didn't know about it at that time there is actually a function like a user defined not a user defined there is a, a function that we can use to extract directly the numeric functions and just we are listing the numeric features what do we got here yeah so after that since there are so many categorical columns and we have some numerical features as well we have to analyze them separately for the numerical columns we can uh, check out the correlation we can check out um, the distribution we can also check out the outliers and on the other hand for the categorical columns we cannot do this stuff we have to uh, analyze them in a different way so that's why it is required to first separate the features so here I have checked out the correlations as you can see here the lighter shade means very highly correlated so this highly correlated means if we keep both of these features it will result in multi collinearity in the final model that means uh, when this uh, what are these features we can see days last due and days termination these two features are highly correlated it means that whatever information this feature is giving us almost the same information is given by this as well so we can keep just one to convey the information we don't need two of them same case here as well amount credit is similar as amount goods price 0.99 this kind of high uh, correlation value is uh, not expected in a linear model or models like that and this will uh, cause in multicollinearity and it will like increase the number of features we don't need this many features so we can safely drop these things also SKID previous uh, is not required because this is an unique identifier uh, it will be uh, unique in every entry and we cannot even use this to merge the two tables so we can just get rid of that 